Once our configuration is complete in the content portion of the website, it's time to move on to the stores portion of the website. So we're going to click on stores here and then under settings, click configuration. This is going to take a bit more time than the content configuration because there are simply more options here. We have general and then under general, we have lots of different subtopics, each with their own groups of multiple settings. And then beyond general, we have other groups of topics for configuration. So there's a bit more here to cover. So we'll start off at the top under general, general. We have country options, state options, local options, store information, and single store mode, which we've already taken a look at. To open up any one of these, to get to their settings to configure, just click on them. And here you'll see under country options, we have default country, allow countries, and a few other things that we're gonna get to. Default country is the primary country that you expect your transactions to take place in. For most of us, this is gonna be the country that we reside in, unless we happen to live somewhere else than is our primary point of sale. If you need to change this from United States, then you're going to deselect, use system value, and then you get a simple drop-down list and choose the default country that you want. For me, I'm gonna keep this as the United States, and because of that, I'm going to just keep use system value as well. I'm not gonna change anything here. Then we have allow countries. These are the countries you're willing to accept orders from. By default, all countries are selected here, which means you will receive, you're allowing your site to receive orders from essentially any country in the world. If you need to change that, once again, You'll deselect use system value and still by default, everything is selected, but now we can select individual countries. Now, of course, this is not a checkbox list. As you can tell, it's not radio, but either it's a simple select list. If you're not sure, or if you're not used to selecting multiple items in a select list, the way you do so is, well, there are a couple ways to do so. First, if you want to select one big group of items, with everything in between, then you hold down shift, you select one item, then hold down shift, click something else, and it will select that and everything in between. If you wanna do things on a little bit more individual basis, then you select one item, then hold control, or if you're on an Apple computer, command, and click other items in the list, and it will select multiple items, anything that you select, or rather anything that you click on. If you want to leave in most countries, but then just deselect a few, then what you can do is select all countries by clicking the first one, scrolling down, holding select, and clicking the last one, and then holding control or command, and deselecting whichever countries you want to remove. In our case though, I'm gonna use the system value once again, of course, this is going to depend on your specific situation. In fact, just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these and then choose use system value. Then we have zip code is optional for. The system value will have defaults selected for you. As you can tell, we have Ireland here, then it skips a bunch of countries, then we have Macaw, SAR China, and so on and so forth. These are countries that, once again, visitors who are making a purchase might need to provide a zip code for. The countries that you select here will have an option to provide a zip code if someone from that country is placing an order. If they're from one of the countries that are allowed, but that you have not selected in this list, then they simply won't have any way to enter a zip code. Then we have European Union countries, countries that are considered part of the European Union for the purposes of your store or your website. And finally, top destinations. This phrasing may be a little bit misleading. What this means simply is that any country or countries you select here will be placed at the very top of any list of countries that it's exposed to the customer before it gets into simply listing everything alphabetically. So sometimes 
stores will do this if you accept orders from multiple countries, but say there's one country in particular, maybe Germany, that 90 or 99% of your sales are coming from, you might want to select Germany. So then if someone's placing an order on your website and they have an option to choose what country they're from, Germany will be placed at the top of the list and they don't have to scroll down to find it. Usually I don't like doing this. I don't like having a top destination. I think it can be confusing at sometimes to users, but it is an option if we want to use it. Now down here, we have state options. We'll click on that. And we have state is required for. This is just like our zip slash postal code is optional for, except this one is required. So for this, any country we select here, if the user is placing an order from that country, then they will have to provide a state as well. Now, here we have allow to choose state if it is optional for country. This is honestly a little bit confusing, this wording here. What this should say is allow optional state selection if it's not required for a country. What this setting means is if we have a country here that the state is not required for, such as we'll go with Angola. If we say yes, then even though it's not required, then users can still provide a state for their order. If we say no, then anything that's not selected here, there will be no way for them to provide a state as part of their address for their order. Next, we have locale options. These pertain to our store, so you'll want to put your own time zone and, of course, your locale. We're going to use English United States. Notice this is really what this means is language, basically. Then weight units, we can change that from pounds to kilograms if we would like. First day of the week, pretty self-explanatory, and weekend days. These are the weekend days for your store, the first day of the week for your store, etc. These two you'll rarely need to change. Weight unit you'll probably want to change if you're operating primarily in Europe. And the rest, again, is pretty self-explanatory. Then we have store information. Here's where we're going to officially assign our store name. Remember earlier when we set the title, that was purely for our title tab, Coffee Bean Central. Now in this box right here, we're telling the website our store's name is actually Coffee Bean Central. So put that there. And then we'll provide our phone number for anywhere that's displayed on the site or perhaps in emails from our store. Store hours of operation. This is when someone might expect to be able to get in touch with us, perhaps via our store phone number. So we could say 8 a.m., to maybe 6 p.m. Country is the actual country that we're located in. Notice since I chose United States, now it's gonna have me choose a state as well. Then of course our zip code and the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. City, address, VAT number if you have one. And then again, single store mode, which we've set to yes, because we're only going to be running one store from this website. Now that's all of just this first little tab under general. Once you have all of that complete, go ahead and save your configuration. And remember, these changes aren't going to take place until we refresh our cash management, but I'm not going to do that right now because there are some other things we want to change before we refresh our cache. So I'm going to close that message. Once we've completed the general part of the general configuration, we'll move on to web.